Hi, I'm Missy Harris, the director of the Lincoln County Library System. I am very excited to welcome you to Gouache Painting with Judy Gooding. Before class begins, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Lincoln County Library System and our facilitators and the Wyoming Arts Council for providing the monetary support in making this program possible. Judy Gonet received her Master of Fine Arts in Printmaking and Painting from the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. After completing her graduate work, she moved aboard a sailboat in the Caribbean and on the island of Trinidad, sold her pastel to oil paint. Eventually, she moved into watercolor painting. She spent 10 years sailing and painting before settling in Wyoming. She has taught at the University of Wyoming, Western Wyoming Community College, the Jackson Art Association, classes at her studio, the Creative Spirit Studio in Bedford, Wyoming. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy gouache painting with Judy Donet. All right, go ahead, Judy. Okay. Hello, hello, welcome back. So we all know that the eclipse is coming up and we're not doing an eclipse, but today we're gonna to do a full moon and clouds and some water painting. Um, the colors that you're gonna to need today are going to be Prussian blue, black, white, for now, okay? And yes, we're gonna to need to take down our paper I have a lot of different versions of it. I was unhappy with all of them until yesterday. And also, if you can find something round to make your um, no. words are not synced with my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's hard to watch myself when my words are not synced with my lips on it. Oh, you're gonna need something round for your moon, but um, do you want to switch to this one? Yes. Thank you. Um, we're gonna, Kelsey had some great googly eyes here for us. Um, you're not gonna draw your circle now, we're gonna draw it after we do our sky, okay? Um, so today we're gonna be combining uh, the, what we learned last week was how we activate to put some shadows into the clouds. But for the moon, we're gonna try and paint on top, maybe reactivate it a little bit. So uh, we are gonna draw the moon on afterwards. And you can see that I have uh, put the moon in various places, though they all still are up. Sorry, we're having someone saying they can't hear very well. So I was just checking our settings. Okay, can you hear now? Is that better? Is that worse? Is it the same? <laughs> I have not gotten a response. Okay. I'm gonna carry on speaking. And if you can't hear me, you won't know that I've said this. Let us know. <laughs> okay. So anyway, you can see that the placement of the um of the moon, I did a really large one down here. Uh, and then I have some that are up in a little further up in the sky. The thing about the moon is that wherever you put it is going to determine where you put the highlights on the clouds. So if you've got the moon down here, then the highlights are going to be going up on the bottom of the clouds. Though for this, I don't think it makes that great big of a deal of difference whether we're um, accurate with our perspective. Uh, so anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to start with our page and we're going to do just like we've done um, in other classes. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top 
um, and come down the page about two, uh, three quarters of the way down the page, maybe uh, two thirds of the way down the page, we're going to go from dark to light, and then we're going to reverse that when we come from the bottom up. We're going to go from uh, from dark to light down to the middle, and then dark to light up to the middle. And I'm going to demonstrate that as I want to do. So it get, you can probably need more than a, what did I say last week? I kept saying P size. Did we switch to garbanzo bean size? Great. Great. Well, not a great. Okay. But we do need a lot. You're going to need more Prussian blue than black. Okay. So, wait. That is not Oh, Prussian on right. Okay, Prussian blue. Okay, we want this to lean towards the blue. I think that um, here's one that I did all black and white, right? Here's one where I use cerulean blue, um, ultramarine blue, and then Prussian blue. So a lot of different blues in there. This one is the one I did yesterday that's combining Prussian blue and black, and I think it's the most successful. So just like we did our first painting a long time ago. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, I'll set up nicely here. We're gonna do something pretty similar to this, all right? Um, but not as light. We're gonna wanna keep it darker. Um, the way we're going to have the cloud show up is by the contrast uh, between dark and light. Contrast creates clarity. I'm using my half inch round for this and coming in and mixing uh, the blue and then the black right in the middle. Um, adding just a little bit of water to make it um, nice and creamy. Do you, are you doing uh, the rough or the smooth side of the paper? I, uh, the smooth side. I think, I think we here in Thane all think that the smooth side is better. Would that be universal, everybody in the room? Yeah. Okay, so we, because when you use that, um, the uh, textured side, I think I can show you my same one. Okay, here's texture, and you can clearly see the texture, and here's no texture. So I really like it without the texture. <laughs> All right, so, the first thing you're going to want to do before you stick your big old paintbrush into your black and blue is paint your page with clear water. It was my mistake, so I had to clean it. So I'm going to I'm going to leave that uh, line, an uh, unpainted part, right where I am uh, having my sky meet my water. Okay. You do not want it to be soaking wet. You want it to merely be um, wet down to prepare your surface for painting. So you can see that I'm going back and forth again. Now I'm doing two just for demonstration. Um, I know that a lot of you are doing two, so I think that's really great. And then um, other people are just choosing to do one, and that's fine too. Because sometimes... Uh, some people work faster than others. Okay, so I'm just going back and forth so that I have a shine, but I don't have a, what's the word we're looking for? So it's um, a sheen rather than a uh, wet. We don't want it to be soft and wet. We don't want puddles on that page, all right? And then I'm coming in with my blue black I think I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. Okay, so once again, you want it to come off the paintbrush quite nicely. And I can even tell, I'm trying to see how my palette if I have enough blue in there. Yeah, this is mixing the blue with black, yes. All right now, I'm starting at the top with my blackest, yes, the blue came out quite nicely. I'm adding just a little bit more water. And go back and forth all the way across the page like this. And uh, you may have to add a little bit more water. And when you come down, what you want to do is have it lighten up as you get down towards the center. 
So Labarge needs a minute before we proceed. Okay. So you can see that it got lighter at the bottom. Sorry that we'll barge and we carry on because our page is wet. And then we'll stop once we get it painted. And then from the um, bottom up, so the dark part is at the bottom of the page. Add a little bit more water so it gets lighter so it comes towards the center. Or it's what I consider the horizon line or where the water meets the, um, the sky. So like that. And when LaBarge gets caught up, let me know, and I'll do this one for them to demonstrate. So you basically, you're going like this. And don't forget, if you do get too dark towards the bottom, you can lift some of it with just clear water. Or if push comes to shove, you can always just go right across the page with your paper towel and lighten it up a bit. This is a really forgiving meeting once you get used to it. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to be making stars again today, so I want you to. Oh. We'll, we'll we'll practice. We don't want we don't want a lot of mini moons unless you want to be on a different plane. Okay, how's the bar shoot? Uh, they're still working. And yeah, other locations are still working as well. The reason you're pre-wetting the paper like we are is just for uh, to make the flow the paint go on with a more of a flow rather than uh, a lot of dry brushing and working your brush back and forth to get coverage. So it really does help. You don't always want it, but for a nice sky like this, you do. So when everybody gets their sky done, give me a thumbs up. Except for those of you in our studio audience can see you. Basically, I think when you combine uh, Prussian blue and black like this, you're, you're making indigo. which is a blue-black color. So camera's ready and Alpine's ready. How about Cokeville's ready? The barge and Afton, are you guys ready? They're still working right now. How about they? That's okay. I want your attention. Are you giving to me today? Okay. 
Did you know that about the movie we had that day? I did not. From my parents. To say from that. In theory. I would say, how how well do we know if this works? <laughs> well, I was hoping in Lincoln National Forest in New Mexico with a lot of mountain on this and I got to the ice on the back of my neck. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 100% effective. <laughs> or, or it was just amusing about the city going up to the people and see that. So one of the things that I added from uh, the first ones to this one is um, some of the uh, grasses in front and then a trees up like that, which I really like. When everybody is caught up, one of the first things we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do our spritzing to get those stars in there. So when everybody is up to this point, let me know, give me a thumbs up, and we're going to need white. All right, Afton and Labarge, are you guys ready? How much white? Afton's ready. How yeah. about Labarge? I think. No, look how much black I could have. That's black. Um, start with the pea size. You can always put more down, right? Okay, everybody's ready. Usually it's titanium white and zinc white, and zinc white gives you um, more blockage, but I don't know what the unidentified white is. So I'm, I think it's six, six dozen more. I can't get my white undone on the white. <laughs> Okay, all right, so I'm putting white down. And we want to do the spritzing method. Okay, so we want to use our number six. Um, our number six brush. I'm going to move that as uh, my painting aside because when you spritz, you spritz pretty much everywhere. I'm going to go back to this one that we did uh, at the first class to demonstrate the spritzing. Um, it's best to test out your spritzing someplace other than your painting to make sure that you're not getting big blobs. We had that happen last week. So to do this, what I want you to do is take a little bit of your white and set it over on another and another thing where you have to add um, even more water because you need to have it loose enough that it will release from your brush. The action for this, once again, is the brush that has the paint on it is tapped and then it is releasing the spatters, okay? Um, you're gonna wanna cover the bottom half so that you don't get, uh, this one, so that you don't get it into your water down there. Right, so I'm just testing it out to make sure that it is not going to be mini moons, and it's it's good. You want to have it pretty far up above the image, and then just do a few taps for a few stars like that, and then you're done. Okay, so I'm going to do that on my moon painting now. I'm going to cover my water, and then it's good, good, good. Okay, and then I'm going to cover my other one. And do the same thing, spritz, 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 spritz. Okay, and that part is done. Or did we get a mini moon again? Yeah. Am I not putting enough water in it? That might be it. Did you test before you? Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So we, we did learn last week that if you do get um, too big of splotches, all we did was uh, smooth it out with some blue paint and all was, all was good. And, and, uh, oh, 
think you really water it down? Well, it shouldn't be, it should be enough water so that it's releasing, but not so much water that you get water spots. Just leave it right there. Okay. Did it turn out on your practice? Okay, good. Okay, so again, what we're going to do now that we have this down is we're going to figure out where you want your moon placed. I know. Okay, thank you. I'm going to put my moon, one moon down here. And now I'm going to draw a pencil around my circle. I moved my circle so my moon is no longer concentric. Thank you. Be careful not to move your moon shape. All right. So there's my moon down there. And on this one, I'll put it up here. Okay. Again, drawing. And your graphite, your pencil should show up just fine, even though you painted them. So you can see that I've got. Can everybody see that? The circle drawn and the circle drawn right there. Okay. And then you're going to do something really simple. You're going to paint that white, that circle. You're going to paint it in white. You're going to try not to reactivate the blue underneath it. The best way to do that is to have your paint so that is, it will release from the brush so you have to have some water in it, but not so much water that you are simply watering this down. So I have it on pretty thick and then I'm paint, trying not scrubbing it on, just getting one layer down and painting it real quickly. Uh, I really need new glasses to get on this one. All right. My moon is no longer um, exactly round. <laughs> it's all good. So there you go. My moon is painted. What brush are you using for the I'm moon? I'm using the number six round for this. Thank you. So we have two moons. It takes on a little power not to break into every moon song that I know. All right, so when everybody has their moons down, we're going to do um, the next step. So give me a thumbs up for that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some white in the water for the um, reflection on the water coming down. So when everybody gets this far, thumbs up. Everybody here, I think. Are we all, is everybody's moon painted out there? What does it say? They're still working right now.
Getting thumbs up and bang. <laughs> All right. Is everybody ready now? Cookville, I saw your thumbs up. Alpine's ready. And the barge. All right, everyone is ready. Okay, very good. So um, for my moon, my moon right down by the water, and even this one over here, what I'm gonna do is um, just put some white in the water for the reflection. I'm going to work on the water later, but I want to make sure to get this in. So I'm just coming back and forth. And as I get further away from the moon, it gets wider. So it's one point perspective. One point perspective is using the moon as, say, your um, vanishing point, and then coming straight out from that. So kind of a B shape, starting at the horizon line. This is the horizon line right here where I left that white. And then and you don't want to paint it solid white. You just want it to be like dashes of white because you have um, rippling, rippling seeds. The seeds are never totally flat unless you're out of fuel and you need to sail. <laughs> so. so generally speaking like this, okay? It's a real simplification of this. I'm going to come over. Now, are, this, you, are you still using the number six brush? I am using the number six brush. I think you could use, I would use, yeah, you can use any brush for this. This one I did not get super dark, so it's not going to show up as well, but I'm still going to do it starting. Just check. So, generally speaking, like this. And remember to go flat back and forth because. I mean horizontal. You want it to be, to be horizontal to the page because water doesn't bend in the ocean or on lakes. Unless you're looking at like 300 miles. But generally speaking, this is a generally a, a rule in a way. Okay, so we've done that and now we want to start painting our clouds. That's going to be our next step. So what we want to do is we want to right down on that white horizon line is where we're going to start building our clouds. And you can see from all the paintings that I've done that I have the billowing clouds coming up in uh, a variety of different ways. Um, some of them I have coming up a little bit further into the sky. Uh, some of them are quite low to the horizon line. Um, yeah, I'm covering part of my moon with the clouds. Here's one where the um, the cloud line down here, you know, is is quite low. We're going to start with these bottom clouds first. This one is really bad, badly painted, so don't do that. Here you go. This one is also badly painted, but you can see the billowing. So what we're doing is we're just. I kind of think of them as mountains down there. And also one of the things we learned about clouds is that you're not painting back and forth like this or up and down like this. Give it a circular motion, okay? We might reactivate more than we want. You can see that I'm painting in a circular motion and I'm coming down and starting off a little bit more um, higher and then coming down, but I'm burying 
the height, right? And I'm going to paint right over that white line that I left right there. Okay, that was just my marker. I'm going to paint the circles coming up and down. And then maybe this one I'll come all the way up and cover a little bit of the um, moon. You can highlight it there and down. Okay, I covered up well. So you're just building up these clouds in this circular motion. Um, by doing it in a circular way, you're getting that bulbous feel that you get with the clouds, the roundness of it. And at the same time, I'm re reactivating a bit of paint down there. So right now I've got some shadow in there, but generally speaking, it's um, pretty white. I still have my white line down at the bottom. Um, I may eventually add a little more shadow to that. Good. Okay, and then over on this one, I'm going to do the same thing. And this time, I don't have to worry about it going over the moon. So, again, painting in circles. Or kind of a circular motion rather than a back and forth. You guys know what I mean by that, right? Yeah. Kind of reactivating the paint as I go. In doing the circular. This one I left way too big for white one down there, so you can turn up the back. So I'm just putting my initial cloud coverage down there at the bottom. I'm not worried about shadows at this point. I'm going to come back and work it a little bit more later on. And so here's my two initial lines like this. And everybody give me a thumbs up when you get this far. We're going to do that next. And yes, we are going to be putting um, more clouds up in the sky, as Tamar just asked, but I want to talk to you a little bit about how we do that. So give me a thumbs up and we've gotten this far. I think everybody's ready to move on to the clouds up above. We are here in Maine. I have a thumbs up from Kemmer and Cokeville. Alpine is still needs a few more minutes or another minute or two.
All right. Alpine's ready. Is everybody ready? Okay. We're going to go for it. So one of the things, clouds take all kinds of, I mean, we know there's just so many shapes in clouds. They change according to season. They change according to um, where you are on the planet. New Mexico clouds are going to be far different than clouds in Seattle. That's why all watercolors live in New Mexico and no watercolors live in Seattle. Just giving you guys people in from Seattle. Um, but one of the things that that you will notice is that clouds, generally speaking, are pretty flat at the bottom, and then they go up, right? Also, they usually um, in the summer, especially during the day, they will be darker at the bottom because that's where the weight of the moisture is, right? Um, because I have my moon down here um, and we're making clouds at night, I think that those things change, but I think that the flatness underneath will remain. However, the moon is going to be lighting my clouds, right? So this moon is down below and this moon is up above. So when I put a cloud in over here, and this, this is how I build them. So I'm going to put a cloud right here. And you want to vary how big your clouds are. Um, so you might have some smaller ones, some bigger ones, some longer ones, some shorter ones, some wispy ones, right? So you can see that there's a wide variety of clouds that you can make. Um, generally, say I'm going to put a cloud right here, I would do a line right across like this. And then once again, doing my, my circular motion like this. We'll kind of vary the um, the height of it and build it like this. Initially, it's not going to look like much, but as we learned last week, you have to keep going back and working it. So I'm going to initially do it like this. I reactivated um, some of the paint, so it's a pretty blue cloud, and I'm going to leave it like this and let it dry before I come back in with more white to add highlights. I might come in over here and um, add a smaller, uh, another small cloud. Just kind of put them um, compositionally where they they look good to you, you know. But don't have them all on one side. Don't have them all the same uh, length, the same density. And just kind of play with them. You can also do some wispy ones right across the moon like this, where I'm just simply dragging my brush through the moon like that. Okay, maybe up here too. And even picking up a little bit of blue going in front of the moon. Okay. So what you want to do is just build your clouds, various, various clouds coming up. And again, you're just initially getting the clouds placed, um, reactivating quite a bit of the blue underneath and then leaving it. And we're gonna let it dry. And then we're gonna come back in and work with our whites to build um, the, I was gonna say billowiness, but I don't know if that's a word, to build our, um, our shadows and clouds up down here. So right now, initially, I have these clouds in here. When you look at clouds in the sky, too, they are going to be in perspective. So your clouds that are closer to you are going to appear bigger. And as they go further in the distance, like this one might be much further back, it's going to be a little bit smaller, right? You notice that when you look up in the sky during the summer, that you'll have, as they go further away from you, they get on. Um, smaller. I think my I think my paper is at an angle and that's confusing. I keep thinking of clean crooked um, crooked clouds. Your clouds are generally not going to be too long to see that you have a cloud going in that direction. Though I could be wrong. I think everybody should spend their summer outside studying the clouds. You get in trouble if you're supposed to be mowing the lawn. But...
in watercolor, we have a technique called dry brushing, which is where you have um, less water on your brush. You can use that method here for also going in front of the room like this, or just putting a light whiskey cloud in like this. You can see how it does add something to the, it's just a little bit of a different kind of cloud. I wish I knew my cumulus from my whatever, but I don't see, I can't tell you the kind of cloud this is. You see how I've got these in there just So cloud, cloud, cloud. And even up here, you can have a, a bigger cloud that goes right across your room. I don't think that you can have a cloud behind the moon, right? Because our atmosphere is here and the moon is up there. I think I once did a big painting. So there, there's a little cloud that goes in front of the moon. Right there. One of those. So this is the initial part of the painting where I've gotten a few clouds in there. And I've reactivated. Is everybody out there reactivating? Getting in front of the moon? And again, when you are reactivating, it means that you've got less paint on your brush and more water, and that stirs up the paint underneath, which sometimes you want and sometimes you don't. When you get that far, now I want to start um, adding a little bit more white to give it highlights. So right here, the moon's right there, I'm gonna add some highlights up here. You see how that just picks up the edge of the, the shaft of the edge of the uh, cloud really nicely. I'm just adding a few more. You don't want to do it everywhere, right? And then once I've added those highlights, then I'm gonna shoot a little bit. So there's a cloud where I've added highlights. And then down here too. Down here, I, I don't have a lot of contrast in there. So what I may do with this one is to actually come in and add um, some darker. I've tried to keep the class where we're doing it in uh, more simple, but sometimes you have to go back and forth. Um, so in this case, I felt like I didn't have not, did not have enough shadow in there. So I came in and added a little bit more dark. It doesn't look like anything yet, but it will when I add more lights. Working in gouache can be a lot like working in um, oil paints. Uh, with technique, meaning that you can work wet into wet quite nicely, which is what the whole reactivation is about. So you can see now how I built um, multiple layers by having my blue and then highlights of white, even more highlights here. Yeah. 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 So to me, this is pretty successful right here. I think happens especially from the distance. But you can see how once I added the white up here, how that really punches that off, right? So the initial, you know, we're working in steps now. Um, 
And so the initial was where we reactivated the rock and blew up and then coming in and adding highlights for areas where the moon has been. I wish I hadn't said that. So immediately the moon hit the sky like a big piece of pie. It's a moray, it just popped into my head. If anybody starts coming in, they'll be thrown out of class. <laughs> Restaurant. All right, so this one I've highlighted quite a bit. Added is everybody doing all right with this? Can I hear some grunts and grunts out there in the studio? Even if you go back over here, you're going to get a really hard and you can just take the image in the same down here. Okay, so you want to do it? Yeah, you can just And that will bring the highlight down. Just try and bring some highlights. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Um, This arrow is the arrow is Even if you come in back later and add some more black in there. Okay, so everybody should continue just working on their under clouds. Okay, we can get some. I walked in front of it. I just see that front of it. Uh, I don't think so. Don't forget that if you've gotten too much white in there, that you can always come in with some of your black and your blue and um, put it right in the cloud to give it more uh, shadow. So you can go back and forth, adding white and adding blue black. In this case, blue. 
We can go more files in front of the files. So, We're getting pretty technical when we use some like shooting. So you can see right down here where I have built layers into the files by putting um, darker behind it and coming in with more highlights.
when everybody is happy with their clouds, um, let me know and we'll go with the um, next part about getting some waves in the water. Better than this. Some, 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 some action in the water. And then also some um, grasses and some um, foliage. So when you all get like this far, let me know. Hokeville's ready. Hammer is ready. The barge and alpine are ready. That just seems insane, right? Are you guys ready? They were all told to be quiet or they were up at the speed. <laughs> okay, so all I want to do for the water, for the, like I said, it's, it's rarely dead calm on the ocean. Um, so all I'm going to do is I have uh, some more of my Prussian blue with black to just get a little bit darker than what I have down here. And just like I did the uh, moon highlights, I'm going to do uh, dashes. Not quite that thick, but dashes going across. Just for a little bit of um, variety. Mine may be a little bit um, too black. That grass is right up to your horizon. Again, um, I should have mentioned this earlier. A big, again, the waves are going to be bigger as they are closer to me and smaller as they go further away. I don't think that's hugely important at this point, um, but I realized it later. But And again, if you feel like you don't like what we've done, all you have to do is paint over it. <laughs> like I just did right there. It's just kind of add a little bit more depth with some dashes. You might even come into your white area with some blue and blue to black. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to do a lot. You don't actually have to do any. You can leave it just like this too. And just tell everybody it was dead calm that day. But you can see how adding some of this has given some rhythm into the um, the water here, right? Some variety. It's movement in the water. And we've been adding a little bit of white here and there. Okay. And then everybody is going to come in with um, our favorite rigor brush. Do you have any rigor brush? And we're going to go into the black. Oops. Um, to make the grasses with the rigger bush, you're going to want to add enough water so that it will release off of the rigger very nicely. But again, not too much water. Okay. And all I'm going to do now is just add some grasses up in front. Okay. So it has to be darker than what you have on the page already. Um, and I'm hoping that mine is. And then I'm just coming straight up in a variety of directions with this wonderful rigor. I don't have to reload it too often. You don't want them to be too um, big. What color? Black, I'm sorry, black. I'm using just black. If we have time, we will add highlights. But for now, I'm just adding black. And just going in a variety of directions, variety of heights, some taller, some shorter. 
I think it's a good idea to um, get the entire bottom of the page covered. The nice, the nice thing about the rigor is it's doing the work for you. It's starting out wide at the bottom and then getting thin as you go towards the top, which gives you a really nice grass look. It's all right if it goes above your horizon line too. So I've got nice grasses built along the bottom. The next thing we're going to do, and this unfortunately got pretty dark, which is why I'm going to add some highlights. But we're going to just put a couple of um, tree branches coming off of each side. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing with the same brush and the color black. And I'm just going to come in off of the side, like right over here. Now down at the bottom, you can come down from the bottom of the page too. I'm going to go all the way up into my sky like that, but just not all the way up at the top because this is in the foreground. And then just like we did the tree in this one class, we're doing the same thing, but more of a bush, you know, kind of a bush shape. So you might have two branches coming off of it like that, or you could even have uh, a third branch coming up, right? And then branching off of the branches. I think that was kind of redundant. So this is why they're called branches for branching off of it, right? It's a good thing I don't want you to do this. Okay. So you can see I'm going in a variety of different directions. And see how nicely that pushes everything into the background and gives you a foreground area, the midground, and then the background of the sky. And then another one over on this side. Oops. Paint. You can cross break in front of your moon if you want. I just did. Normally, when I'm painting my branches, I come from my main branch out. So here's the main branch, and then I to come out like that. I almost always do it that way because it's thinner at the top. I'm watching an artist on uh, YouTube now who does it the exact opposite. So he comes in from, in from, and he does a lovely job too. So either whatever feels comfortable for you in making those branches. And then after we're done with that, we're going to add some tiny leaves, which you know, I say this a lot, but our leaves are blobs, okay? So I'm just adding tiny leaves there. I'm just various places. Again, black. 
we're doing everything. We're doing a silhouette of everything right now. And if we have time, we will add some highlights um, as though the moon is hitting the leaves and some of the branches and grasses. But for now, we're just going to stick with silhouette. We're just going to look at fine too. So all I'm doing, I'm, I'm still using my rigor for the leaves. Um, you can certainly use your number six or your cat's tongue. Just adding little bunches of leaves on the branches. I'm using, uh, uh, so making silhouette in black. So I'm using, doing all my leaves in black right now, a silhouette. A lot of time in wash painting, they, 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 we, we do this. We put black down first as silhouette, and then we start building the colors on top. And again, if we have time, I'm gonna introduce you to that. For sure, we're gonna start doing that in the next few weeks. Let me show you what I mean here. So I have brought my green kale into play here. I've just put up a little bit on my palette, and then I'll show you what I mean by adding some highlights. We've got the black down here. If I just add some of this. And I'm adding uh, just a little bit of green right on top. And so you can see how it really picks up the color, right? Color green. Um, green pale. I think it's, yeah, green pale. And I mixed a little bit of my white that I was using with the clouds into it to just get it a little bit lighter. And then I might just come right in here and do a few spots of green right on top of my black areas all over and this is not absolutely necessary so if you are still working on your um black grasses it still is in my opinion quite lovely so don't sweat it if you can't get this far and just touches Generally, we all know that at night you don't see a lot of color anyway, right? Adding green into the plants is for the left brainers out there who can't deal with the purple trees, right, Jim? Thinking of our friend Nancy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a huge system you're going through. So, here's with the green added. Okay. And you can see how the black is still there, but the green is added just nice little highlights. And all I did was blob it right on top of it. Don't quote me on the word blob, please. What does that sound? Green into the leaves. 
Yes, yes, I did. You see that? So there's just something about putting that black down first, which really highlights uh, the color when you put it down and it starts to build depth. You can add a lot of different, you know, I could add more, more different, more different greens. I could add different greens as well on top of the black. Here I've got um, the pale green with, um, white and uh, some of more white and some of less white. So again, this is how it looks when you add the green in there. Why not? Okay. It doesn't matter. So, if they do just be my friends. And then you've got some nice shadows. I didn't need to insult your water and say, I don't need this little Okay, okay. I might just put it on. This is me. Yeah, this is all. You might want to get just like a minute branch and put it down there. So you can have all of a sudden the space right there. And then maybe one more can be off of it. I'll put the link. And then, yeah, this is well done. I was, I kind of forgot to remove the part of the water. Should I do that? It's fine. And maybe some tiny backwards, but do you just have any parts or something? Oh. Just so you, Judy, someone has to see a close up of the green. Okay. I was just. So you took over.
Oh, see, there you go. Oh, I see it now. I do. Uh, so Cameron has said they're ready to show theirs. Oh, super. If you would like to see. Yes. All right, so Cameron, bring your pictures up. You want to show yours now? Please? I don't care. We'll show it. Where is that? There we go. There's one. Carol, that looks good. Thank you. Maybe let me here. It's something. Oh, is that it? Yeah. That's pretty. The Loch Ness. Did she put a Loch Ness monster in there? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's my favorite of the day. <laughs> I really love that too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure before I say, oh, that one's beautiful. I love how you did the grasses. Yeah. And I love how you love that space too. Very, very nice. Are there any other branches who are ready? Thank you, you guys. All right, we're going to go to Cokeville. They've got some. Very green. That moon is something else. Right. Oh, I love that one too. Very nice. Oh, I love that. Oh, yours is really soft. I love how you did that. Oh, that was beautiful too. That was rough seas. Oh, beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Oh, what a great moon. Look at how she's got all the lighting. All right. Any other locations? La Barge or Alpine oh, or Afton. La Barge is ready, so we'll go to La Barge and then we'll do here. We always forget Fort Lane. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. my beautiful. gosh. That was a beautiful sky. Yeah. Oh my God. This one, too. You guys are totally rocking it there in La Barge. Oh, look at this. That is beautiful. Oh, nice. Yeah. She's fine. All right. So, Alpine or Afton, are you guys ready? Are you guys feeling so I can show you All right. We're going to Afton. Okay. Oh, wow. Nice. That is very, very nice. I think it's happening too. Oh, beautiful. Great grasses. Thank you, you guys. How about Alpine? Alpine, are you guys ready to share? Alpine is ready to share. And then we'll do here in Thane. Oh, Alpine, I've got the wrong camera, sorry. 
Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Very, very, very nice. nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Tumultuous seas. Oh, look at that. That is great. I love the way you did the trees and the grasses and the sky. Very nice. That was a lot of this. Really good. Thank you. You did a really good job on that. Yeah. It's probably the best uh, moon reflection. That's really good too. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And here are things. Here we are getting the light there. Can you see it? Yeah. Here's the other one. Very nice. Yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. How do you get it in the light? God. There we go. Look at that. That's a beautiful sky. This is another one who did a really good job with the reflection of the moon. Mm -hmm. Really good. All right. Still you have such a good focus. I love to show it. That one we need to call that to me. I forgot who these things were. She did the horizontal one. She's doing the next too. I'm and sorry, I, have... I don't know which way to hold it. There we go. There we go. These are beautiful. Very. Okay, great. All right, so thank you, everybody. Next week, we are going to be going, this is probably not going to be the image we're going to do, but we are going to go horizontally next week. And then the final project, I think we have three more classes left. Okay, the final project is going to be, we have hopefully new white mat boards. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be doing um, two images in a diptych format. I don't know what the images are gonna be yet, but something generally like this. It'll be two paintings that go together. I'm struggling with my green one. Uh, we may even get into a force, more of a force you seem like that. I just don't know yet. It depends on how much time we have, but it's going to be, um, yeah. we're gonna spend two weeks doing um, two paintings, okay? Uh, so if we do one more like a forest like this, uh, it will take a little bit longer and we'll be working in stages. But next week we're gonna do horizontal, which one of us already was a rebel and did that this week. Um, it'll generally be something like this. So this is not my image, so I don't feel comfortable teaching it. I'll come up with something. Might include the Tetons, you never know. Right. All right. So I will see you next week, and thank you very much. I think you all really rocked it.